Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming ministry of the Reformed Catholic Church, and I am also the Servant General of the Franciscan Community of Mercy, or the Order Franciscans of Divine Mercy and Love of God. That's our formal name. And this ministry is you basically serving the poor, the sick, the aged, the hungry, the homeless. But today, we will be discussing the readings for the third Sunday of Easter. And they are from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verses 27 through 41. Psalm 29, verses 2 through 13. Apocalypse 5, verses 11 through 14. Apocalypse, or Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and the Gospel of John 21, verses 1 through 19. Now, I give you these readings, and I tell you where they are on the, in the hope that you will actually go and open your Bible and read them and meditate on them. The first reading for this Sunday explains clearly why we are all need to always profess our love of God to attain everlasting life with God and forgiveness of our sins. When Peter and the apostles answered the chief priest who were admonishing them because they were proclaiming what Christ had accomplished with this answer. Now remember, this is Peter and the apostles. The high priests were condemning them because they were proclaiming what Christ said and did in his lifetime. And the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than human beings. Listen again, I'm going to repeat that. We must obey God rather than human beings. I'm going to stop right there because that's very important. What did God say? Look at Scripture, read it, ponder it. What did Jesus Christ say? What did he tell us to do? Not what I tell you, not what the bishop tells you, not what the pope tells you, unless what we and they are telling you is consistent with what Jesus said then. But you're not, you're not doing it because we told you. We're doing, you're doing things because Jesus said this is what you must do. Okay, go back. The apostles proclaim we must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgiveness for their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so it is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Think of, uh, there's an awful lot of importance in there. We answer God. We answer to God. And we do what God tells us. And Jesus told us what God wants. Okay. 
human beings didn't like what Jesus was saying. So what did they do? They killed him. They hung him on a cross, but he conquered death. He rose from the dead. And God exalted him and raised him up. And he is at the right hand of God. Now, the right hand of God is always considered as the the power. The right hand. This is my right hand man. You've heard that it's, it's an expression. But it actually comes out of scripture. God exalted Jesus and it, to his right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. Then the apostle said, we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Holy Spirit is given to us. We receive it in baptism. We receive it in confirmation. It's why when confirmation is conferred, the priest or the bishop is wearing red vestments denoting the Holy Spirit. The receive the Holy Spirit. All right, that's the first reading. The second reading is from the book of Revelations or the book that's commonly called the Apocalypse. And it gives the reason that we need to give God honor, glory, and praise. It says, the lamb that was sacrificed, Jesus Christ, is worthy to be given power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. It says, the lamb that was sacrificed, Jesus Christ was sacrificed. In other words, the lamb that was sacrificed refers to Christ was the new Passover. The new lamb that was sacrificed. The new covenant that God made with us. There was the covenant with Moses which to this day the Jewish people still follow. And that, it's the same God. Christ gave us a new covenant. The lamb that was sacrificed is worthy to be given power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. That's what Jesus Christ is worthy to receive. The Apocalypse of the Book of Revelation is the vision of St. John, the youngest of the apostles and the one who lived the longest. John is often called the beloved disciple, which is what, as I said, the Book of Revelation is detailing a vision that John had. All of heaven and earth, even the animals, bow down in reverence to Almighty God in this vision. So often in life, we spend more time complaining about things than recognizing the good things that Almighty God has done. Think about that. We usually, we spend more time complaining than praising and being thankful for all the wonderful things that God has done for us. We go on. We've had the first reading. We've had the second reading. 
which now comes to the gospel story. How Christ appeared for the third time. And it is here that Christ gave the apostles and all the priests who were to follow through all the ages. Gave Christ gave the apostles and subsequently all the priests who were to follow through the ages the way they should fulfill their vows as servants of God. It is how I am supposed to fulfill my vows as a servant of God. It is how Bishop Chris is supposed to fulfill his vows as a servant of God. It is how Pope Francis is called to live his life in accordance with the vows he made to as a servant of God. Simon, Christ said, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Peter answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Do you love me? Peter replied, Yes, Lord. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Do you love me? Peter was upset and angry. How dare you? You're asking me a third time. I've already told you twice. I love you. Peter was upset that he asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you were young, you put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else would pull a belt around you and take you where you would rather not go. Whoa. I can tell you that passage is an eye opener. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put it. It's, it's saying that as we get old, we're going to need help. And sometimes we're asked to go to places that we don't want to go. And sometimes people are forced I can tell you, I see it a lot. As you know, a major part of my particular ministry is serving nursing homes, hospices, senior living facilities, and I see an awful lot of people, and sad thing is, some families put their loved ones or supposed loved ones into one of these facilities and then forget them. They don't even bother to come to visit. And that, that tears at your heart. How often as we grow old we find we have to rely on others to go where we desire. And sometimes we have to go where we would rather not go which is a lesson in humility and a lesson that if this be God's will, so be it. You know, I, I'm 84. I'm very aware that I may have a limited time left and that I may be forced to go where I don't want to go, or I have to live in a way that I don't want to live. 
where people have to bathe me or take care of me and dress me and feed me. That was fine when I was a baby. But my stubbornness, I'd rather not have that. But if that be God's will, I have to try to accept it. That's what we all have to do. We have to try to accept God's will. The illnesses that we have to deal with are a means of us being able to offer them up to God as an offering for us to partake in His sufferings. The Gospel reading ends with, follow me, follow me, follow me. That's what we're asked to do, is follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we're to really, truly follow Christ and be His servants here on earth, we need to look at every individual on the face of the earth as part of God's creation and as part of the family of Jesus Christ and as our brothers and sisters. And we have to realize, look after my sheep, feed my sheep. Next Sunday, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, one of the two favorite Sundays that I have. And the images of Christ, the Good Shepherd, that will be next Sunday. So, the Shepherd, Christ is the Good Shepherd, and we are His sheep. And Christ has said, look after my sheep, feed my sheep. That's what he told Peter in this gospel. We should never allow any person, any person to be abused, to go hungry, to suffer illness needlessly because they could not afford proper medication and medical care. No human being on the face of the earth should be homeless or hungry. No person should be barred from seeking freedom, from oppression. To follow in the footsteps of Christ means to denounce war. To denounce homelessness. <coughs> Excuse me. To denounce discrimination, bullying, and to stand up for justice and equality. We need to follow the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why God sent him here on earth. We need to show God how much we really love him and desire to follow his teachings, we need to reject the materialistic world of today where fame, power, wealth are considered signs of success. St. Francis, our seraphic father, was very rich. He had the finest of clothes, yet he denounced it all in order to follow in the footsteps of Christ. 
and donned peasant's garment and went and served the lepers and those who his society rejected. And that is what Franciscans have strived to do in the 500 years, the 1,000 years or more. Strive to follow in the footsteps of Christ. My yoke will not be easy, but take up my yoke and follow me. We need to be, make our voices heard whenever we encounter injustice. Whenever we see it, even if it's in found in the highest levels of government, churches, in the nation, Christ admonished the money changers in the temple and the hierarchy of the Jewish faith, and he suffered willingly for it. Recently, the clergy who spoke out against the abuses in the church have suffered rejection and censure for speaking out, but by doing so, they followed Christ faithfully. And I was truly looking after his sheep. I've been abused and told I'm being political because I'm telling people to feed the hungry, try to give to overcome homelessness and poverty. Because I, I preach what Christ said, I'm being political because what I'm saying is contradictory to what our government is, is attempting to do and or has done. So I'm being political. <laughs> well, you know what? Christ was accused of being political too. I'm following Jesus Christ, and I hope you are too. We need to consider that as Christians, that's what we're called to do. Come follow me. We need to pray for all those who have heard the call to follow Christ. We need to pray for Saint, I'm sorry, he's not a saint, he's still alive. We need to pray for Pope Francis, who's striving to follow in the footsteps of Christ, who's striving and attempting to reunite the one holy Catholic apostolic church. Christ and the apostles founded one church, and that's all that there should be is a Christian faith. Pope Francis is reaching out. He's attempting. He has shown us in many ways by things he's done and said. He is attempting to be the vicar of Christ here on earth. But we need to pray for him. And we need to pray for all the priests. I need your prayers. We all need your prayers. As we pray for you, please pray for us. so that we can strive to live our lives faithfully in keeping with what Christ told us. Feed my sheep, look after my sheep, guide my and instruct my sheep. 
proclaim the good news of salvation. That's what we strive to do. And I hope, I hope that I'm doing a job. I don't know. I, you know, one of the things, I do this show in a TV studio. It's aired on public television networks, stations around, all around, not only New England, but the country. It's on YouTube and Facebook and uh, Twitter and Blogger and, but I don't get the feedback. I don't know if I'm making a difference. I pray that I am. I pray that I'm bringing people closer. I ask God to inspire me and guide me so that I can bring people closer in knowing, loving, and serving God. Until we meet again, I ask you to please visit our website. You'll see pictures of events and things that we've done. You'll be able to read the homily. You'll be able to see this TV show again. If you, It's always there every week. The weekly show is there for every week. So it's all week long. You can look at it. You'll find an update on our annual fund drive, which, as I proclaim this show uh, and tape this show, we are still uh, $3,000 short.